Hi, I'm Tiana. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't already, subscribe down below. Today we're talking about how to auscultate cardiac sounds and where in the world is that apical pulse. This video was brought to you by request from my phenomenal subscriber, Karen Pewter. Hi babe, I hope you enjoy this video and if I did not pronounce your name right, please let me know in the comments down below. Let's start by doing a brief overview on your stethoscope. If you want an in-depth review on the stethoscopes that I'm using today, please watch my video all about stethoscopes. I'll link it down below so that you can find it easier. Let's start by putting your stethoscope in your ears, okay? So today I'm using my Kela Cardiology and the stethoscope that I use now, which is my Littman Master Cardiology. For those of you who don't know, I'm an ICU nurse and so this is my stethoscope of choice right now. When you're putting your ears in, <laughs> I almost hit myself. When you're putting your ears in, you want to make sure that your your ear tips are faced away from you. So they should come to a point away from you, not ever towards you. I always get a little chuckle when I'm watching doctors on TV because nine times out of ten, they put their ears in with the point facing towards them. And now that I've mentioned it, I bet you'll notice it every time and get a little laugh yourself. The main difference between these two cardiology stethoscopes is one has the traditional chest piece. Give it a little tap so you know which side is open and which side is closed. So listen to your cardiac landmarks, five seconds in each spot with this one. Hold the tubing firmly as you turn the chest piece to open the bell, and then you'll listen to each of your cardiac landmarks, again, using the bell to assess for um, abnormalities, abnormal, sorry about that, abnormal heart sounds. And the other one has my favorite, and what I recommend that you all get as well, and that's the tunable diaphragm. Every nurse that I know either has a tunable diaphragm and loves it or wishes they had a tunable diaphragm. If you have a tunable diaphragm, it saves you a step because to hear those high pitched sounds that you're listening to with your diaphragm, you just give it some firm pressure. So you listen to your landmarks with firm pressure and then lighter pressure so that you can hear those low sounds that you would hear with the bell. So it saves you that step of having to go through everything twice by just listening for 10 seconds, five with firm pressure, five with light pressure. Now let's talk about cardiac sounds. I'm sorry about that noise. Now let's talk about cardiac sounds. And that's that traditional lub dub that we think of, right? When we think of the heart, lub dub, lub dub. And that lub or S1 is the beginning of systole. And that dub sound or S2 is the end of systole. So you have lub dub or S1, S2, S1, S2. Now, what am I talking about when I say systole? You've probably heard it already. Systole, diastole, or your systolic blood pressure, that top number, and then your diastolic blood pressure, that bottom number. Systole is that contraction of the heart muscle, and diastole is the relaxation. So contraction, relaxation. I want you to think of systole as squeeze. So systole starts with S, squeeze starts with S. So systole, squeeze, diastole is that relaxation. Squeeze, relax, squeeze, relax, systole, diastole. Now when you hear that love dub, you're not actually hearing that heart muscle contracting and relaxing. You're hearing the valves in the heart closing. Welcome to the better version of that video. <laughs> I was feeling a little, I don't know, like I was at work or something, or I don't, maybe I went into teacher mode automatically, but I couldn't even finish editing it because it was just so boring and like I was sitting in a lecture and who wants to sit in a lecture unless they have to. I wanted to kind of break it down. I wanted to be myself in my video and not feel like I was at work. <laughs> Just do it for fun for you guys. My friends, let me introduce you to my very favorite study buddy, Mr. Bones. <laughs> my favorite study partner of all time. I really love this guy. I've had him forever. And look, oh, isn't that neat? You can see inside. Oh my gosh, guys, look at that. Oh. 
It's amazing. And I got to use this to study. Oh, look in there. Oh, it's just oh, so cool. Coolest thing ever. Sorry. <laughs> So I know this is super, super nerdy style. I don't know if I've told you, but guys, your girl's kind of a nerd. I know, I'm sorry, but you can benefit from my love of study. <laughs> and you don't have to do all the hard work, just watch my videos. That's not, that's not asking too much, right? <laughs> What's a few videos between friends? Anyways, let's get to it. I'm sorry, I get sidetracked. Great mnemonic to remember when you're trying to remember your cardiac sounds, ape to man. And that helps you to find your apical, pulmonic, herbs point, tricuspid, and mitral valve landmarks. The aortic valve is best heard to the right of that sternal border in the second intercostal space. What even is an intercostal space, you might ask? Well, it's the spaces in between your ribs. The pulmonic valve is best heard to that left sternal border in the second intercostal space. Herb's point is where you can hear the love and the dub, S1 and S2, and that's on the left sternal border in the third intercostal space. The tricuspid valve can, can be best heard to that left sternal border in the fourth intercostal space. And the mitral valve is actually mid-clavicular. So you locate your patient's clavicle, you estimate where the middle is, and you go to the fifth intercostal space. That's where the mitral valve can best be auscultated and that is where your apex is and that's where you will find your apical pulse. So listen to your apical pulse. You put your stethoscope at that mid-clavicular line in the fifth intercostal space and you listen for one full minute. A lub-dub is considered one count. So lub-dub, one count. Lub-dub would be two counts. So you need to hear that full lub dub in order to count one. Your apical pulse is the most accurate non-invasive way to get a pulse. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that it helps you when you are trying to locate your cardiac landmark and count that apical pulse. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't already, subscribe down below and join the family. And I can't wait to see you next time.